second. There's Toffee, just sort of hanging in a sort of Michael Myers fashion. How are we all? Hello, everyone. Uh, Caesar, whoa, Jesus Christ, that was dramatic. Um, come on, lad, says Vicky. Uh, hi, say added bite or added adage bite. Uh, sorry if I've got that wrong. Say, see, say. Ruth Blandford, Alison Fisher, Reme W, Margaret O'Brien, Ruth Blandford, Carly, you know, Margaret O'Brien. Sorry, I'm repeating. Someone somewhere, Elliot Gonzalez, Deborah Lansbury, Ruth Blandford, Sarah Whitfield, Elsa Pop, Grandma, Rosie's Channel, Fiona Reed, Jenny Scam, Lior, Heather Cromack, Jennifer Cando, April Hill, Anita Amor. Did you really say that Sting is 70? Can't even get my head around that. Rachel Hannon, Emma Carter, Nicola Randall, Charlotte P, Hazel Malbon, Gemma C, Faith Goodman, Helen Groves, Jean Quirk from Jean the Bean, Debbie Parra, Rebecca Pigeon. Um, hello, one and all. Uh, Jennifer Scott, Jen Legs. Oh, Caesar, Olga Brown, Francois Camanzuli. I miss saying your name. Uh, Miriam W. Sting is on the one show and said he's 70. 70. 70. Sorry, I've been wearing a cap today, so my hair's gone a little bit skew if. Um, oh, Lucy Moore, we love you too. <laughs> we do, we do, we love you too. How long have you been with us? <gasps> 14 months. Magic. Magic, magic. Um, Kaz Rowley, two months, feeling a bit low. Can I have a group hug? Come on, guys. Let's everyone do a group hug. In we go. Group hug. Group hug. There's 400 of you. Nad is going to be here in a minute. If you get that up to 200 thumbs up, I reckon she'll come flying down those stairs like a pair of nuns' knickers, uh, which isn't fast, if I'm honest. Uh, hi, lovelies. Kimberly Jones. Hello. Katie Travers. Jenny J. Anna. Jane Grimsey, how have you been today? How have you been? Bob Geldof is also 70, officially a grumpy old man, Lucy Heaney. What happened? What happened? When did they all get so old? Um, Susan Davies, not that that is old, but for rock stars, I just, I always seem to remember them in pop videos, dancing around, you know what I mean? What's that big black thing? Oh, it's Mike. It's called Mike. You all right, mate? You all right? Yeah? You want to talk to us? Not really, no. Um, hi, Mark. Hi, e. Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi, e. Mark. All that tantric yoga. What do you think about that, tantric sex? Do you think that's a thing? Discuss. Is tantric sex a thing? Sitting there for... It's a bit boring, isn't it? Sitting there for 82 hours, oming. Isn't that what you do? You sort of go, om... Um, and you just sit there and you just, I don't know what happens. Has anyone ever done it? Hi, Gabrielle. Has anyone ever done it? What's that? See? Has anyone actually done it? All I know is I need a toasty. Oh, Carly, you know, what sex? <laughs> uh, Dawn Claricoats, what's it? I've never fancied an om, Angie B. Um, I doubt it. No, no, I'd rather have a cup of tea and cake, says Teresa Saunders. Uh, Sarah Fox, not really researched that particular avenue. Um, I should wait really for Nads to be here for this, but um, I don't know, <laughs> I will wait. Say to me, when Nadia comes, say, Mark, what was the thing you wanted to discuss, but you needed Nadia there to be there? Sheeda Roberts, sounds boring. Yeah, 82 hours. I mean, I, I, someone's is asking, is it 80 times? There's a real lag between what you're saying and what comes up on here. Um, yeah, I, no, I'm kind of saying it would take 82 hours to have sex like that. But, I mean, I'm not too sure if it is 82 hours. I think it can be 120 hours. It's as long as you want to make it. Um, so, uh, rather have a cup of tea. Normal sex would be something. Yeah, no, it, I know what you mean. Well, I, the reason we're talking about this is Sting and his wife, obviously. Um, I'd hyperventilate and pass out, says someone somewhere. Um, of course, they, they were often in the press for, you know, having uh, tantric sex. Um, Reese, I'd read your comment, but for some reason, as your comment goes, oh, hang on, maybe you're coming up in a minute. Uh, there's a real lag. Let me, let me just refresh this page, and then hopefully... 
82, 82 seconds more like. Uh, what was Reese? Reese, you were saying you actually had some evidence of someone who's done it. Uh, uh, Russ Sanch, what's all this shaggy, shaggy chit chat? Russ, I don't know. We got there. <laughs> we got there via Sting. <laughs> Bizarre. I mean, look, come on, guys. Isn't the first the first thing I think of when I see Sting is I think of him cross legged with a boner. I mean, I know it's wrong, but that's all I ever think of now because they went on about it so much. I've got Nadia here to go. Mark, uh, hi, tra la la. Um, Nadia will be upset. Yeah, same, same. It's the Caesar. It's the same, isn't it? I mean, all I ever think is, is it? What's his wife's name? Trudy? No, what's what's Sting's wife's name? She's a very successful and and, and really good producer now, isn't she? Film producer. Um, so yeah, whenever I see Sting, and I liked a lot of Sting's music. When I was young, where we used to live, um, in a basement flat, uh, back in the days when it was really cheap and grotty in Labrick Grove, um, the police, which was this band, they used, their management used to have a shop just on Portobello Road. And they used to put their singles, their seven inch singles in a box outside their shop. They'd be worth a fortune now, original seven inch singles of the police's first tracks. Me and my mate Perry used to get them and play frisbee with them in the street, and then they'd come chasing after us. Trudy Styler, thanks, Ju Julianne Allen. I, I, I once, I think I once interviewed Trudy. She was ever so nice, but again, all I ended up thinking was, you know, tantric, tantric. Miriam, I hope so. Miriam, Miriam, I hope so. I mean, I'm waiting for her. Maybe she's on the loo, doing a number two. I don't know. But if she is, we'll hear it. Um, he has his legs crossed now, says Laura Walker. Nadia, come and moderate quick, say adage by. Can you write your name ph phonetically? Because I want to get it correct. Evening, Judith Huey. Um, Nadia, Nadia, where can you be? Up on the loo doing a wee. Uh, Every breath you take is creepy, says Catherine Hamblin. The stalker song, the obsessive possessive nutter song. <gasps> Oh my God, I never thought of that. Oh my God, suddenly, suddenly it's just, get rid of it. Maybe that's why we played Frisbee with it. Um, bet she is not tidying her room, says Sue. Uh, no, Christina Bet, Christine Bet, never got my, never got my COVID results, no. Um, no, I know, isn't that, isn't that outrageous? Um, first thing I just wanted to mention, who's a fan of the hairy bikers? Pamela Owen, shout out. Shout out. Jill the Sub needs a belated 50th song and just got engaged. Wow. Jill, Jill the Sub. Jill, I'm gonna call you Jill the Sub. Who's a fan of the, the Hairy Bikers? Love the Hairy Bikers, yeah, Jill the Sub. Uh, 50th and engaged, wow. Oh, that's a lot happening for you, Jill. I don't mind them, seem lovely, but don't watch. Well, one of them is very ill with COVID, by all accounts. Um, and Hairy Bikers star Cy King, he's the one with, the, with more hair, essentially, says best friend Dave Myers is not very well amid COVID battle. Uh, so Dave Myers is really struggling. Dave Myers is the one that used to be a makeup artist. And in fact, I think he once made up Nadia's dad. I'm sure if she was here, she'd tell me, what do you think, Ned? Is that true? Yeah, she's saying, yeah. Uh, Harry Biker Cy King has spoken of the oddness of appearing on TV solo as his best, <coughs> best friend and co-star fights COVID. Well, I hope it's not too difficult a fight. He says that Dave is not very well, but he's a as tough as an old boot. So I thought we could all send, we could all send, their, um, send them our best wishes. Uh, Miss Serendipity UK, are you still in touch with Perry? No, I've tried to find him. I'd love to know where he is. Perry Radford. Um, Creatorholic, how are you feeling now, Mark? Not great, if I'm honest. I'm not great. But this is a pleasant distraction and this is nice to do. Come on down, Nadia Swaller off the telly. Um, she is coming. She will be coming. Get well, Dave Myers. You're the best. Yeah, Dave lives near me in Kent. They're a sweet couple. I remember years ago um, when I was pitching something to BBC Daytime and they said, oh, the hairy bikers are coming in next and they want to do something without their motorbikes. 
which would have made them just hairy. You know, what would they have called them? Just hairy. Uh, but yeah, they're very sweet. Now, and Nadia's met them quite a few times. She says they're a lovely pair, lovely pair, very gentle, very real. It must be get, it must be must be very strange when you're in a twosome. Do you know what I mean? Just the hairy men, Sam JP, the hairy cooks. It's a bit off-putting though, isn't it? The hairy cooks. Whereas the hairy bikers you expect. Um, but uh, yeah, no, Nadia does need a detention. I'll put her in. Uh, got here. <laughs> Someone just said, who was that? Tuned in late, Maybu, to Sting and Boner. I'm going to present those two words to Nadia in a minute and I'm going to see if she can connect the two things. Uh, Lucy Moore, hope you're okay. Well, thank you, thank you all for asking, and thank you for your comments. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. It's not great, but I, you know, one has to just crack on, and and it really is nice just kind of tuning in with you guys and being silly. I'm thinking of staying with a boner. Oh, I thought that was a footstep. Put Nadia in the corner for being late. You were a twosome. You're doing well, Mr. Right. Michelle. Michelle. My bell, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday. She texts me, she texts me, she texts me, and asks me how I am. Michelle, if I wasn't with Nadia, and if you weren't gay, we'd be together. Hiya. There she is. Sorry, I'm late. It's all right. How are you all guys? You've now got to guess. I'm limping. You've got to guess what the connection here is. What is this here? Oh, because you weren't here. I just wanted a microphone oh. there. Sting. Yeah. And boner. Don't know. Have a guess. Have a thing. Have a thing. Know. What do we all know Sting for? What's he most famous for? When you think of Sting, what do you think? Be honest. Oh, you're talking to me? Yes. Um, She's off camera. Police. Police, okay. What else do you think of? Nothing. Tantric sex. Mm. Yeah. So when I, we were saying earlier, when I think of Sting, I think of him sat there cross-legged with a boner. Um, how is she not putting it together, says Caesar? It's all I think about. <laughs> Someone just tuned in and said, I've just tuned in and all I heard was Sting and boner. Um, very diplomatic, says Steph Schultz. You're absolutely right. She's not playing, so there we go. Helen Groves, tantric sex nads. That's what it's all about. Um, so, uh, nads, I was just saying that one of the hairy bikers isn't well. He's got bad oh. COVID. Oh, Dave no. Myers, Psy King has been him. on TV loads saying Dave Myers is battling COVID. He's not very well, but oh he is as God, tough as an old so boot. lovely, the hairy bikers. Okay, I was going to say, I think your dad... The, your the dad, one with the dark hair, Dave. See the dark hair one? Dave's the one with less hair. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. She's off camera. She is, she's sort of saying that it's, you know, she, she does, she's, she's met them, she's worked with them, and she's, um, and her dad has had his made up, makeup done by Dave. Yeah, yes, with the dark hair. Um, do anyone remember that series where they used to make really big versions of something? So they, they did like a giant donut, I think. And then they did a giant prawn cocktail. Does anyone anyone remember that? No. Yeah. Yeah, they just did like massive versions of something. It was odd. I mean, it wasn't a high point of British commissioning, but it, you know, it, there was something vaguely watchable about it. It was ahead of its time because that's what people started doing on YouTube. Yeah, true. Do you remember that Steph Schultz remembers that? Oh my God, I'm having visions. That sounds awesome to Caesar. There's another show, Caesar, in America as well, where they make giant versions of things. Yeah. I tell you what, it was a really good show, and it was on years ago, James May, and he made, with Lego, he had to make engineering feats. Do you remember, like a bridge across something, or he had to do a garden at um, Chelsea Flower Show out of Lego. Lego's in, in our topic tonight. But yeah, that's our first subject. So Harry Biker star, uh, Cy King says that best friend Dave Myers is not very oh. well. Uh, and he says it's very odd appearing on television without my mate. God, he's that me. unwell. Uh, he says he's getting there. I think he's not too well, but it's not bad. It's very odd to be here without him. It's a bit Oh, it's odd. not too bad? Yeah. Oh, that's good. You just wanted to open up a little and just have the crack. You know that Dave and I are like, we can talk the hind leg of a donkey. Da, 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 da. Okay. Is, so, he in, is he in hospital? I, I, I think the suggestion in some, on some websites is that he's iller than his mates making out. Oh. Um, but anyway, yeah, let's hope. 
So there we go. So we've done we've done sting, not literally, because that I'm would take getting, eighty-two hours. I'm just trying to get my last bit of calories in. <laughs> oh, I'm out. I'm out. I'm, I'm I've been gamed out of the system. Seven, hey, seven, yeah, seven o'clock was my time. Yeah, eleven o'clock. No, nope, you ate at eleven fifteen this morning. I logged it. Well, I got fifteen. No, I'm still out at seven twenty. Anyway, this is in, in, really boring for you guys. Sorry. Oh my god, so delicious! The cake I made that's in the No Name Sunday show <gasps> this Sunday. Mm. Oh guys, mm. it's just exhausting. Anyway, I've been holding for. I was going to mention the Karma Sutra, but it's too exhausting. <laughs> no, what I wanted to say was, do you remember as a kid? or as a teenager, people would talk about the Kama Sutra and they would say all these words oh, no. about the weird... And I remember being really intimidated by it. You saw the pictures it. and it was like, oh, God. Well, you saw the pictures and... Oh, the it, most unsexy thing. Yeah, but the pictures also looked like... They looked really strange. They looked like really unsexual people standing That's what I mean. in just poses. Like, it was just... Like, it was just. I think it's the unsexiest thing ever was yeah, the Kama Sutra. Yeah, so they'd Sutra. be like that. And it would be called the Flying Lotus. So weird. Anyone else does it? I mean, I'm, I knew someone who was making it their life's mission to work through every single position in the Kama Sutra. Mm. What a weird thing. What a weird book, eh? The willies always look so weird and pointy Pampinus. Hey? Eh? The willies always look so weird and pointy, <laughs> says Pam PMS76. <laughs> hey, it's perimenopausal, International Day of Perimenopausalness today. It is. What does that mean? I think, I think just across the world, people are just trying to get more awareness for right, it. Right, right. I was like... just talking to a doctor this afternoon and she was just saying again, it's just astonishing, because she's actually from Brazil, she goes, it's just astonishing how many women are left Sorry. in such a state in this country. Oh, my God, yeah. Because of it. And is perimenopausal the point at which you don't... Do a lot of women are confused as to whether they're actually menopausal? Is that sort of strange? Perimenopausal the... is the best time to start HRT. Right. I always thought it related to peri peri sauce. <laughs> Sorry, some of your comments. Can I just say, guys, this doesn't work without your great contribution. Mm. Jane Donnelly. Yes, I am, Julianne. Jane Donnelly. I'm lucky to get my legs through my knickers in the morning oh, without definitely. falling over. <laughs> Can you still stand up and put your tights on? Has anyone ever fallen? Have you ever fallen over putting your knickers on, like proper yeah. face plant? Not on a bed, but face onto plant, the floor. Maybe not. No. I nearly, I nearly sliced my neck open in the shower room trying to put my shorts on, and I just, you know, you know when you sometimes, I, you, no, you no, your foot's going a million times a minute, and there's no hole. Oh yeah, and you're yeah, like, I love Where that. is the hole? There is, a, there was a hole there for when my leg. When little kids do that, it's so sweet. Yeah. Oh, piri piri, not peri peri. Is it? Is it piri menopause? No, it's oh, peri menopause. Oh, oh, I see, piri piri. Is Sting with a boner a pose in the Kama Sutra? <laughs> I think it should be. I really think it should be. It'd be like that. I bet, I bet it'd be like that around it, wouldn't it? He'd be going, oh, I can't see you. Um, Faith Goodman, Nadia, toasted sandwich, lasagna, blimey, looked good, never seen onion grow. Guys, if you haven't seen this, tell them what you've made. I made the most gorgeous, we fancied lasagna, didn't we? So I made the most gorgeous lasagna in the sandwich maker. Absolutely delicious. I'll put the so you um, get lasagna thing up here. in ten minutes. Yeah. yeah, it's well meals in minutes for today. Yeah. What's your cookie dough video today? What was the cookie dough video? I think you did a meals in minutes about cookie dough. Shout out to Nadia Kowser. Hello. Hello. Um, Tina Davis. I sneezed once and I didn't realise that the wall was right near me. I headbutted the wall as <laughs> I sneezed. <laughs> Tina Davis. Nadia's, That's a great accident. Did you see the vlog where Nadia tripped over a mento? Mento? Do you, have you not seen that? You fell up the stairs. You saw it in the compilation with, that Sky did. Oh, I didn't you know. You fall up the stairs in agony and you, I said, what have you fallen? I said, someone left a mento, <laughs> a mento, mento on the floor. What know, are you trying to say? A mint sweet? A mint do you not sweet? remember that? A mint sweet? Yes. I mean, do you not remember? No. I'm really worried about your memory because you sat there and specifically said you laughed at it. Yeah, but maybe I didn't realise I was laughing at a minto. Oh, I maybe see. I was just laughing at me falling. Okay. Um, yeah, Pam PMS76. I watched that the other day. You saw it and hadn't picked it up, and then you were furious with me. Yeah, up the stairs, Jane. Brilliant No Name Sunday <laughs> show yesterday. It was, wasn't it? It was a sort of without its technical errors, apart from Nanny Die. Uh, nothing beats the curtains vlog. There could be something that beats it very soon. Uh, bedroom gate. Um, Tattoos, Nads. Would you ever get a Love tattoo? That, Ellen. Shout out to Hannah. Um, 
and non who are having to wait for their dinner now because this is more important. Oh, well, there you go, you see. Shout out. Um, tattoos, Nads, would you ever get a tattoo? Yeah. Right. Well, that, okay, that was a conversational call to say. No, only because I think when I was younger, a tattoo was only a negative thing. It was a tramp stamp and that was it. Yeah. Now I think they're real works of art and I think they're a beautiful thing. I'm trying to work through the fact that I believe it should only go on a really beautiful, you know, somebody with a gorgeous body, what's going to look like when it ages. But why? Why does it have to be? Because I think if you choose a tattoo that has a meaning to you, it shouldn't really matter about what you're going to look like with it on in the future. Caesar's got 18 tattoos. I hope you're going to show me every one of them, <laughs> as long as it's strictly legal. Um, I know what you mean. It's weird. I think tattoos when I was younger were very much the preserve of... And this sounds ridiculous. I mean, when I was a kid... You're just seen as a negative thing. Well, they were, no, they were, but it was either Hell's Angels or it was fishermen. It was, you know, fishermen would have, yeah. you know, the classic, the anchors and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it quite literally would have the anchors. It's not a, that's not a kind of, you know, cliche. But um, I'm, I noticed a couple of times we went to LA, tattoos, the whole tattoo thing in America is completely taken off in a different way. It mm. sort of led from there, and I think we've kind of inherited it. I think it because when the movie stars started having... Well, it's big having, in the military, Susan. Yeah, says, yeah, I think when the movie stars started having... Oh, I just, and, and most movie stars now have tattoos, don't they? Yeah. I mean, it's a bit of a headache when you have to cover them up when you're filming, isn't it? God, I mean... Look at um, Angelina Jolie. Who likes... She's hugged in them. OK, let's, let's do this. Do you like a man with a tattoo? Yes or no? Do you like a man with a tattoo? Joe Wicks is on Loose Women on Wednesday, I know. Oh, there's a little widow. You're my little widow. Yes, no, yes. Oh, Jeff Bezos. Yes, yes. Oh, Jeff Bezos. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, what would you say? That's kind of... Oh, yes, says Rita Williams. Oh, yes. oh, I love tattoos as long as not on faces, Jacqueline Clements. I've just had my second tattoo done. It's a Quentin Blake drawing of Matilda. That's lovely. Aww. My favourite film as a child, and my nan has always said I am Matilda. Oh, I love that. Not really bothered, not full arms though. Yeah, what are they called? Sleeves, aren't they? Sleeves. If you had you one, what would you have? That's a good question. What would I have? Would you have words or, or a picture? Um, words or pictures? Uh, probably words. I'd probably have only connect because I me, knew you were going to say no, that. No, no, I, no, I know say, it's a bit. It when I was thinking about it the other day, I was thinking we could both have that done. Because I know that when we first met, you used to be wowed by that, but now you're probably just bored of it because it's just. A, but I think it's a quote that it's a quote that um, Ian Forster popped at the front of Howard's End, and for me, it it goes to the heart of everything. Connection. It goes to the heart of this. Yeah. It goes to the heart everything. of recovery, relationship. Only connect. That's what I'd have. Only connect. And I'd probably have it on each... i tell you what I would like. A W... If you do a W on each buttock, Caesar, and then bend over, it spells wow. Oh, Mark, that's so old, don't you? You're sounding more and more like a seaside... Oh, look, Kate finds a penny and forced to quote is, is beautiful. It is. It, I think it goes to the heart of everything. Oh, I've got them all over my neck, Tracy Mayhook. What? Tattoos? Thank you. I remember oh, working I in an. Bravery for that. I worked in an unemployment benefit office as a teenager for summer jobs because my neighbour was the manager of it, and we used to hand. I mean, it's terrible. I felt awful because I was younger than most people coming in. I was handing out the doll to them. You know, they come in, and mm. sometimes you weren't allowed to because there was some issue with something or other with their claim. And I remember having to. I remember my boss saying to me, my line boss saying, "You have to tell him that he can't have it." I said, "He's a very large man with a spider's web tattooed on his face." No. He said. Tell him. I was 16, See, I 17. Was so, I was so prejudiced when I was young. Well, I suppose not prejudiced. It was just what we were told. That if I saw anyone with a face tattoo on, mm. they were effectively a murderer to me. I was frightened wow. of people. Wow. But now it's just de rigueur. You don't think anything of people having... I mean, look at what's the name Kardashian's boyfriend. He's got them in every... Scene. And actually, sometimes when I've seen people with them absolutely all over them, I find them quite beautiful. Oh, look at this. Look at this, Caesar. Even my wife has two, but those are memorials for our past children. Oh, God, Caesar. Oh, Caesar. What told me about your loss? Mm. Mm. Michelle Penny says Dolly Parton has a load to cover her scars. Yeah. She, yeah, she? you told me that before, Michelle, yeah. Really? Hi, Michelle. Hi, yeah, uh, Michelle's just lovely. Tra la la, Nadia, have you had your baby milk smell cuddles yet from Stacey's baby? No, I'm seeing her this week. I'm going, uh, me and Jane are going off to see her. Oh. Can't wait. 
Uh, she just looks like she's just going to smell so good. I'm just going to plant my nose in her neck and just keep it there. Oh, oh. Well, I just want to show you guys something that's quite funny. Because this story actually has legs, so to speak. I'm just going to take you off there for a minute. And, oh, sorry, just move that. So this is why I thought we could talk about tattoos. Because, let's just pull this story up. Tattooist shows off huge horse on his legs, but people see something else. Oh my God. You ready? You ready, ready? What do you see, guys? Oh, that's not good. <laughs> Tattoo shows off huge horse inking on customer's leg, but everyone's saying the same thing. It stings Jonga. <laughs> People, OMG. OMG. Oh, awful. Oh, no, yeah. And what bit of it is supposed to look like a horse? Well, that bit there looks like a horn. No, but... it does well, horse. Horses well, don't You know, exactly. Horse. And that, I <laughs> guess, is the main. Well, I mean, that, He's turned that, that into bit trees. there looks like a horse's nose, but, but we all know what that looks like. Oh, my Lord. God almighty. Do you think he's used a penis as a model for the chin? It's just the most hideous thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Think again. Think again. Very funny. Yeah, so, I mean, that would be my worry. My worry would be... Oh, sorry, guys. My worry would be, what if you... What if you got something and it was wrong? What if oh, God, I mean, you've got to do research upon research upon research to make absolutely yeah. sure. I get really petrified. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, and the other story here is... Oh, Lego. Hang on, this is good. Look, Lego. Lego is removing... Hey, who loves Lego? Oh, are they removing gender bias? Thank God for that. Yeah, because I think this we is stopped good. buying. It was so annoying. Lego and how everything had to be pink and had to be yeah. built a kitchen and what, builder. And what I noticed was for young girls, they made the Lego bigger. Yeah, and like they were pinker, stupid. Like they were dense as hell. And my girls would get it and be like, I don't want that. I want the Pirates of the Caribbean one. Yeah, but sometimes I think you just wanted stuff that wasn't just warships yeah, and themed. aeroplanes. Themed. You know, you wanted better themes. Like, why not do a theatre? Or a swimming pool. Yeah. Or a horse riding stable. But everything was so gender biased. Oh, I'm pleased about that. Yeah. Did, do, did any of you like Lego? I mean, my granddad used to have a box of Lego. This, and we this never was... had any kit. We only had bits that we had to make oh, ourselves. My, well, no, we didn't have a kit. He just had a box with yeah. lots of bits in it. That's like us. And he would just say, let's make a house. Yeah, we made houses all the time. We, we made, made a house. It's problem solving making stuff from Lego. Yeah. And I, I was quite good at building Lego. But the girls loved following the... I hated following the, all these well, ones. Following the rules. It's just like... What yeah, do you think, guys? I mean, it has a place, but I think it did take away the creativity and the problem solving um, lessons that you get from... You know, yeah. I remember the first house I made and I just built all the bricks on top of each other. Oh, yeah. And obviously they have to be like this. To, and, and just that, just the absolute joy of realising that's what you had to do to make sure they all stuck yeah. and go around the corner. And did. You know, it, everything has got a bloody leaflet and yeah. numbered bags and sorted into yeah. colours. And if you miss a bit, you can't do the rest of it. It's a bit annoying. And then when they've made it, everyone goes completely mad if anyone knocks it. Whereas when we made Lego, you made it and then you smashed it all to bits at the end and made something again the next day. Absolutely. Do you remember um, at one point we were super gluing it as we went because it was so annoying how annoyed Oh, it yeah, was. it was annoying, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so what the story is there is that Lego are removing gender bias and harmful stereotypes from its toys. Good. It will make play more inclusive and creativity is not going to be limited by gender stereotypes. Um, so, yeah, I think that's good news. I think that's good news. Good, good news. I wonder if any of these LBC presenters know that they're being filmed. <laughs> Who said that? Because you always see these films of them, oh, don't you? And they're always looking so... Yeah, I know what you mean. It's like... Downbeaten. Yeah. Uh, and the final thing I thought we'd ask is, is Britain getting angrier? And, yes. Um, <laughs> why, why do you say that? I th I've spoken to a couple of people today and they were all saying... Do you think Britain's got angrier? so Seriously. low, but Mercury is in retrograde, so apparently that's having a big Mercury effect. is in retrograde? Yeah. What does that mean? I don't know. That the but planet... it affects people's moods. Does it? Yeah. Do you believe in any of that, guys? Do you believe in but, the Mercury being in retrograde? But and all that? I think everyone is angrier because the world is fucking horrendous. I mean, I opened a tin of Coleman's powdered mustard today 
and I nearly wanted to cry. You nearly went batshit crazy. I did, I nearly yeah. cried. She lost her shit, guys. You're quite angry at the moment, I think. Babe, you're very, very annoying at the moment. <laughs> the only person I'm getting angry with is you. It's true, guys, it's true. No, but, but this tin of mustard, it just felt like days gone by. An era gone by that we'll never have back. Lots of people are saying they're angrier. Who's angry? Who feels that? Everyone's so stressed, exactly. And now I can just feel the media ratcheting up to how oh. to scare us next. Yeah, what's the new phrase? Come on, oh, share it. Oh, God. Um, twindemic. There's a new thing now, guys. Really made me Twindemic. Today. What's the twindemic now? That's like flu and COVID together. You know, it's unlikely. Very unlikely you're going to get flu and COVID together. So let's not make this a great big scaremongering narrative. And also they do say you shouldn't miss your, mix your drinks, don't they? Yeah, it's just they like... They mix your oh, viruses. Fuck off. Yeah. We don't need it. We don't need to know. Oops. I hate that kids having to wear masks again back at school. It's just like... Who's oh, angrier God, now so. than they were before COVID? Who's much angrier now than I'm they very, were before I'm very, 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 very angry right. with... Boris and Dominic Raab. I cannot stand You've the You've got parody. a particular beef with Dominic Raab, haven't you? Well, <laughs> because he said no one would be choosing between eating no, and eating. No, I know. <laughs> I know, but yeah. But how can you say that? Like it's an arsehole. When how why. many people, five million people in this country, apparently are living in poverty. Mm. How can he say that? Okay, when okay. big business who earn millions are saying we're going to crash because of the fuel increase. So why wouldn't people living on the breadline, living in poverty, be choosing between heating and eating? Fuck off, you horrible, posh little twerp. Well, there you go, guys. I think we are angrier. We're much angrier <laughs> now than we were before. We were trying to demonstrate that anger. I think you've done it beautifully. Just... <laughs> Richard Grindley, I'm not fucking angry. <laughs> I, look, I'm most angry with, with, with the government. I'm most angry, actually, with the constant and apparent um, Drama out of a crisis. gaslighting exactly, gaslighting Fox. that's the part of it all that makes me angriest but 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 are you finding that the smallest thing gets you angry now i mean has your fuse become shorter in areas that you would they normally are talking, get across they are saying that the country is in stockholm syndrome with oh. with with boris right because so he's taken us hostage essentially keep saying he's a great guy on the polls yeah, right? who are you, these people? If you people? listen to LBC all day long, you will hear one brilliant person after another explaining exactly why he is shit. Yes. There is no plan, you know. There is no plan. No, 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 there isn't. There is no plan. But he in a weird literally way... literally hoping everything will be but all But in right. a weird way, it's like we've been taken hostage by a court jester. Yeah. Who just keeps and standing up going, there and going and like this. And going, well, let's just stick with him because, you know, what else are we going to do? It's like Julie Baxter says, the polls are fixed. Who are they polling? Who are they? Not even the right wing press is on his side now. Well, here's, a, here's an interesting detail. Could I confirm if there is a plan or not, Michelle Penny? Um, here's an interesting thing. That not a lot no of people plan. talk about the tie up between this remarkable vaccine programme, finding a vaccine, all remarkable. And now we're but, lowest vaccine, uh, but, excuse me. But no one, no one is allowed to ask questions about Big Pharma and the financial incentives behind boosters and all that. You're not allowed to. If you ask it, you're, well, you're, you're, you're some kind people of, well, I know John Campbell started. I mean, and we're double vaccinated, yeah, and so you we cannot... have the right to ask this. We're not coming from an anti-vax POV. Yeah. At the moment, I would need a lot more information before I have that booster. But here's a thought, here's a thought along the same lines of the big pharma, that's why I'm mentioning it. YouGov is an organization that does a lot of polling in this country. And YouGov is a- Government. Foot, you dot gov. Yeah, it's a government. No, it's funded... not. It's a it's a publicly it? public limited company floated on the stock exchange. Oh, how objective can their polling system be if essentially they're they're a product of capitalism? Do you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Is that could there be another skew, as you rightly say, that the polls are actually only going to tug towards making Boris seem like he's winning everything to demoralise the opposition? I don't know. I don't know. I've gone off on one there. We won't be saying one, more, one way or the other with the vaccine for the girls because it's very much their private business. So yeah. we actually, we, we'll talk about what we're thinking of it one way or the other, but we're not going to say whether they're vaccined or not because that is their private yeah. medical life. And basically on that note, don't ask. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Well, we can discuss the pros yeah, and cons yeah. of it over the weeks, but we won't ever be saying 
Or they had their vaccine yesterday, oh, or look, they're not having their vaccine. It's only me. Nadim Zahawi owned YouGov or did. You're absolutely right. He did has he? a tie-in with the po leading polling company. Ooh, start to unpack Thanks, this stuff, me. and it's all inextricably entwined. Maybe we should start, maybe as part of Coffee Morning Wine and Wine we should unpack a particular subject. Yeah, that would be good. I we wanna... do just accept so much of what we're just told, don't we? Yeah, we really do. I mean, it was interesting because the other day I was saying, I was saying, well, you know, this, of course there's this iver ivermectin, you know, that is still, you know, could possibly be, you know, a fantastic drug to help treat um, COVID. Isn't that the one that Trump was going on about? So, so, so I said this at work and a couple of the loose women said, oh no, that's been completely dismissed now. There's no, and I was like, oh, right. Oh, okay. And I accepted because I respect these two women and, they, and I respected that there was some report somewhere. Yeah. Anyway, the other night I'm listening to John Campbell, who don't forget is an expert in researching data and is a medical person and everything. He ripped it apart that, because what it was, was a journalist from the BBC he goes, oh, next, oh, I've got a bit of a chest infection. Is there a journalist anywhere I can talk to? He was really sarcastic. Oh he ripped apart this report from the BBC. He said it's based on nothing. Right. And now the word is, oh, I've evet, evet, isn't something to even think anymore because the BBC did a study on it. Oh, right. But it was really interesting the way he just unpicked it yeah. sentence by sentence and it was a bit of puff. Yeah. Well, not, we not a bit of puff. I mean, that would be awful. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, do, I mean, I, I'm guilty. You're not, you're not guilty because you have a much more inquiring mind. But... I want to accept I don't accept less. anything people say I want to me. accept things less because I think too often we're given the top line and I work in television and it's all about what's the top line. But can I say you're we very, you're very trusting. Deeper. People people, people you deem to be intellectual can bulldoze you very quickly. Well, you let not them, so much You anymore. hand them the keys to the bulldoze and you go flatten not, me. Not so much any. Well, no, it makes me sound like such an No, idiot. no, because you're a nice person. No, you're a nice you, person. Should, you hand the key to a <laughs> me and you say flatten me. That's horrible. To some people you well, deem... Well, can you rephrase to some, that? Okay, to some people you hand the keys and let them bulldoze. No, what I... What actually is what I was saying earlier on, I think is the better and nicer way to say it, I don't want to accept, as much as I have done in the past, the top line of what I'm told. Totally agree. I never because, have accepted the top line. And that's why I have become a bit of an addict of LBC again. And I go on and off LBC because it goes on a bit. But you do get under the nuts and bolts of things. And I like that. Yeah. Dawny Harvey sums it up. I couldn't give a flying fig anymore. We're, we're mushrooms being kept in the dark and fed shit. fucking are. It's just right. It's just lies all the time. Uh, uh, it'd be nice to be I a mean, mushroom. I mean, what about all this quasi quasi? Quasi quasi. You know. What, him going to the Treasury asking for some help and them saying he was lying? Yeah, and that what? he does this all the time. What, so is Quasi can't take... Is, is well, he, there's is another he, minister Is he renowned for running around we're the TV station to, saying... He said, we're all talking to each other all the time, another minister defending it this morning. I mean, spitting image couldn't make this funnier than it is, could they? Well, I think that's why we all just keep going along with it, because it seems so ludicrous that, that you couldn't almost uh, question it. And guess it. what, guys? Guess what? Trump is going to probably be running for 2024. God help us. That's going to be a curious moment, God isn't it? God help us. What's your views on Prince Andrew? Outrageous. We think he should absolutely... Right, OK, I was thinking about this and I was thinking, you know what? The police can only do what they can do. And if there is no evidence, but... Yeah, but... just because there's no evidence doesn't mean there hasn't been. Yeah, but there is no way that Prince Andrew's every move by his security detail would not be logged. There would have been a, a bodyguard sat in that Pizza Express, sipping on a Diet Coke, whilst he was there making pizzas with the other birthday children, right? So what, where is that evidence? If they've got that evidence, why haven't they told us that they've got that evidence? Well, I, I, do you remember me saying this about the whole Jimmy Savile thing? When they say there's no evidence of a cover-up, that doesn't mean there that isn't a no cover-up. It means that a there's really no successful cover-up removes evidence. But of course, we must never forget that he has 100% denied any yeah, 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 yeah. We don't know where the photograph came from. That's the tricky thing, isn't it? Well, he it? claims it's doctors. With his arm around her. Yeah. He did. Yeah, he, she did. He did, Sharona. Thank you very much. We haven't talked to him about it yet, but he did. Um, 
So, final thing to say, Reese, the Democrats need to get their act together. You're damn Jesus right. You're damn right. Well, Biden needs to string a sentence together. I just don't like Biden. I can't. He's annoying me. I hate him. And where's his wonderful vice president stepping into the well, breach? Well, he obviously doesn't let her come anywhere near anything. He doesn't want her to, does he? He doesn't want her well, to. Well, he knew she did. He didn't. He, I feel like he used her mm. uh, for the female ticket and the ethnicity ticket. And because it's like, why don't you let her speak? Well, that's, that's a big accusation. Did you see in one of well, the big... that's what it feels like. He was with about six other world leaders and everyone got a bit concerned because apparently he had on his key ring one of those laser lights and he was flicking it in someone's no, eyes. Oh, why are you that <laughs> He's called Laser Biden. Um, oh, right, a couple of uh, <laughs> welcomes and happy... Carly, you know, says we, I or you should, should read bedtime stories. Do you know like Tom Hardy did? I think we should. We could do. We could do a really. I did kind Jack of, and Ori. Yeah, we could do Jack and Ori. Why don't we do I never Jack and saw Ori? It. I would love to have seen my Jack and Ori. Should we do a Jack and Ori, guys? Over. We could do it Jack over Christmas, Nori. couldn't we? We could read a Christmas child children's Christmas story. Yeah, I love story. reading Christmas stories. Why don't we do that in the members area? Christmas tales, like the ones that I don't get to read the girls anymore. <sighs> uh, anyway, Di Stanton, welcome. Di Stanton, welcome, welcome, welcome. Di Stanton, welcome. Welcome. Oh, that was beautiful, babe. Thank you, babe. You can sing. I know. Can I have a kiss? No, that's not a kiss. You're just offering me a forehead. That's rubbish. I was offering you to kiss it. Jill the Sub. Right, kiss my hand. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Jill the Sub. Two things. It's her 50th and she's got engaged. Happy birthday to you. Engaged. Happy birthday to you. You're engaged. Happy birthday, dear 50th and engaged. Happy birthday and you're engaged, to Jill the Sub. Oh, that's lovely news. Lovely Double news. lovely news. And I didn't realise Sting is 70. So if you leave us with one image tonight, just think of Sting cross-legged with a boner. There you go. Nice image for the night. Don't you think? Are you going to say goodbye? Why are you so proud of yourself? <laughs> I'm not proud I don't of understand it. why you're proud of yourself. Oh, 